we've taken every single box score from the original very first NBA game and we've put it into our database. And so now you can actually take a game that happened last night and compare that performance against a Michael Jordan game back in the 1990s or a Larry Bird game or a Magic Johnson game or a uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar game. So it gives people perspective to say, okay, I, it, I know that LeBron James had a pretty good game, but how did that compare against some of the other former players? And people have real-time access to that information, but it's technology that helps enable that because now the technology exists and the infrastructure is, exists to create and crunch this data in real time, getting it to the fans and consumers quicker than we've ever been able to do. During this playoffs, we actually have been delivering real-time clips from our games via Twitter into people's feeds, and they're able to open up those clips, and it creates some real-time excitement for the game. So if you see a great player, if you see that the game is coming down to the wire and you get this Twitter video of, a, of, a, of NBA footage, then you're inclined to go and turn on the TV and watch it or turn on your digital device and watch the game through our game time application or any other mobile application that you have. Just the other day during the Miami Heat Indiana Pacers game, 65% uh, of all social media conversations were around that game. And so fans, when it, there's that dual screen experience that when fans are watching our games, they're also interacting with each other through Twitter, through Facebook, and they're talking about the game in a very social way. You know, we talk about the water cooler, and I think the NBA creates this digital water cooler talk, but instead of the next morning around the water cooler, it's happening real time in, in this, what we call digital water cooler. So the NBA is sparking those conversations in the social media space, amongst our fans uh, every night of the week.